I think out of uh, all of our guys, I think maybe two or three guys come from roofing. Okay. So we're, I'm not out there trying to meet other people's people to hire them. I'm actually not interested in them. How you doing? Great to be here. Thanks for yeah. having me. Thanks. Thanks for joining me. Yeah, yeah. So we're at your cool office here in Irving, Texas. Yep. Can you start off by giving us a little snapshot of Linear Roofing? Uh, what the company's like now? What you guys are up to? Yeah. So uh, we started in 2015, and uh, we started with like three of us. Okay. Um, for the record, I was 42 at the time, so I started door knocking at 42 years old. Did you? Right. So. Okay. You know, for all those folks out there that, you know, think that door knocking is for the birds, you know, I saw the opportunity and, and just went for it. I was, right. I was actually uh, executive vice president of sales for a large company, right? And um, anyway, so uh, we've grown and grown and, and, you know, we've been building our, our thought process here in, in Texas. And... Uh, there's been quite a few storms like San Antonio and those places over the years where people have all rushed out and opened up an office and, and then, you know, it's like, I've always said, Hey, until you become a household name, yep. right? There's really no reason to go anywhere else. Right. Because, so I feel like, you know, we're at about 120 guys now in DFW. So I feel like we've sort of pushed the envelope a little bit. It's maybe even a little too many. Um, so time to expand, you know, okay. time to take the footprint a little further out. So, um, we actually got licensed in Colorado just before COVID hit. Okay. And then we were like, eh, let's not do that. Right. Yeah. Um, pretty shut down, I think in Colorado. It did. Yeah. yeah. And it was a good timing. So we put that on hold. Um, so we should be going there pretty soon. Um, we're licensed in Louisiana. We, we did some work out there. We didn't chase that. I didn't think it was a good idea. We did some work out in, Charles, I mean. yeah, we did some work out in Lafayette, okay. right? Which was actually hail work. Right. So we didn't actually go chase the destruction, uh -huh. right? I had my own thoughts on that economy in itself and, right. and, and the destruction and if it's insurance deals, where that money's truly going to go and uh -huh. how would your collections be and how long would you have to wait for your money, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we, we didn't really chase that. Okay. And, um, that's never been our model. Right. So I'm just a, you know, mean what you say, say what you mean, nothing more, nothing less, right? So likewise, when we operate, um, how can I chase storms? And I know this is just my opinion, but how can I chase storms and truly service warranties if I'm not there, mm -hmm. right? So that's why it's never been the model to, to just chase, get a local number, do that whole right. game. I know there's a lot of good guys out there that make a lot of money doing that. That's just never been what we've wanted to what we wanted to chase, right? Mm -hmm. When COVID hit, we were at about 50 guys. I had a conference call with leadership and I said, "Hey, this is not going to beat us." Cuz I don't know if you know, in Texas door knocking was shut down. Well, I think the whole country yeah, for but a little while at least, yeah. Yeah, I didn't pay attention to the rest, but... And that's a big part of your business, of course. It is, yeah. yeah. And uh, so I had a conference call. I said, we're going to dominate this thing, right? Here's what we're going to do. We're going to hire everyone we know that is in sales that, are, that can't go to work because of COVID. Because every single one of those people have a modern-day Rolex, uh, uh, Rolodex yep. of people that they know, right? Which means we don't need to knock doors. We can just jump on everyone's roof that we know. Right. And what we can do is create an opportunity for people that are sitting home to earn some money as opposed to sitting at home, mm -hmm. right? And if and when the country opens back up, they can go back to their regular job. I'm okay with it. Right. Right? We give them, it becomes a win-win. It's a platform for them to create some revenue while they're not working mm -hmm. and uh, feed their family. And then if they want to go back to their their job when it's over with they can't i don't think i know of one person that went back really yeah and and we basically doubled our size last year through COVID. uh we doubled our revenue last year and we doubled our size 
which actually puts us in a position to double our revenue again this year. Awesome. And, and we've doubled revenue the last three years in a row. So, uh, so that's where we're at, right? That's some good offense there. Yeah. It's like you're not going to let external circumstances dictate what's going on. Not at all. That's a little more detailed for some company owners out there. I was so paranoid because I think Wells Fargo had expected like mortgage defaults to be like, I can't remember, like a hundred million or something. And, right. and, and I think it landed up being like 756 million or something in defaults in like a very short period of time. And my math's probably way off, but either way, it was some exorbitant number. Right. And it, uh, it got me really worried about our collections on the back end. Right, give give that final payment to linear roofing or feed my family. Yeah. Right, we all went into this panic initially. Right, we were worried about it, so I even raised our overhead on all jobs for a ninety day window because uh, I was concerned of collections. Yeah, and I said, and I pulled the team into the office and I said, you guys decide if this is about longevity and everyone's careers. Right, we're not going to collect it and keep it. Meaning we're not going to collect it and spend it. Right. We're just, it's just a reserve just in case X amount of dollars can't be collected. Right. right? So um, we got to the 60 day mark and I canned it. Collections were okay. okay. Everything was fine. Um, and then I actually created an incentive program to give that back to my people. Okay. Right. So I didn't just take it. Right. And, uh, and that's what we that, did. That's why they're still with you. A absolutely. Yeah. So I'm sure like most businesses in the last 24 months, it's been somewhat scary. Um, I think the beauty for everyone out there is this was considered a essential business. Yeah. Right. So we were extremely blessed right. to, 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 to be in that position, but also not buckle down, but double up. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean, you're definitely grateful for that because there's businesses like restaurants and gyms that were told they could not operate, so your hands are kind of tied, you know. Of course, you can get creative with takeout and delivery and things like that, but that's that's tough, I feel, for those businesses. The cool part is we took all these guys that had been in these nine-to-five jobs making X amount of dollars mm -hmm. for an extended period of time. You know, I have some pretty cool success stories like... Uh, finance managers at car dealerships and and these managers and those managers that are still with me today uh, that didn't have work at that time. Uh, I've even got their wives sending me private messages saying, thank you so much, my husband is back, right? Because they used to live they used to live in those those jobs and they never see their family and kids. Right. And maybe they made okay money, but now they're making more money and having a better quality life, right? And that's really what we're trying to do, right? Give people the freedom to truly enjoy their life and not live to pay for their life. Right, right. That's, that's a win win right there. It is. It's huge. You win at work, succeed at life. Even if you made the same money right. and you've got far more time on your hands. Yep. Now um, it's a tricky subject for me because I talk to people a lot about, you know, money should not dictate your daily actions. Mm -hmm. Whether you got a thousand dollars in the bank or ten million dollars in the bank, you still wake up and put in a good day's work. Yeah. So I still preach that, regardless of how much money you're making. Mm -hmm. Right? It's not about the money. Right? It's about being the best you can be. Mm -hmm. Right? And if you focus on that, then the money will come. But either way. Some really good success stories through COVID and hiring and, and, and getting people, uh, you know, back to enjoying quality of life. Awesome. Yeah. I definitely want to dig into more of the recruiting aspect and culture and retention and all that. But let's hop back for a minute to your background just a little bit. Because one of the things that I am interested in, and I think the audience would be too, is that you're kind of an outsider. Well, literally an outsider from South Africa. I am. Coming into the U.S., from outside the roofing industry, making a pretty big splash in the industry in just a couple of years. So you spent 20 years mm. at LA Fitness. What was it that 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 drew you to the roofing industry? Yeah. Uh, so a lot of people ask me uh, how I got you. Yeah. I tell them airplane. <laughs> uh, but anyway. Um, so in 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 the health club business, I'd met some people that had been in roofing, okay. you know, and, and they'd come to us and then they'd actually left and gone back to it. Right. 
And my perception was always these guys that like have got lines all over their face from being in the sun every day right. of their life, looking like typical contractors, collar, li truck in truck. living yeah. uh, in motels and bars. And right. that was always my outsider opinion, right? Until I started doing some research, right? Okay. And then I started talking to more and more of those guys that I'd developed relationships with over the years that worked for me that had been in and out of roofing. Mm -hmm. One of them actually being uh, one of our partners, Neil. Okay. Uh, he, uh, he was a general manager for me at LA Fitness. Okay. Right? And then I'd actually left to go deal with an acquisition. And then uh, when I came back, he wasn't working at LA anymore. Uh, him and I connected and uh, I'd done some digging with some other people and I said, hey, how much longer are you going to work for roofing companies? I'll put the money up and everything. Uh, you just, you, you know roofing. I don't know the first thing about roofing. So you run the, you know, the installs and the, you know, the, the outside stuff. Okay. I'll handle office money, all that kind of stuff. All right. And, uh, hey, truth be told, it was extra money for me. Okay. It was like, there was never the strategy to leave. Okay, like, it's a side hustle. Yeah, basically. I was gonna like I I wanted to run LA Fitness. Okay. I wanted to eventually be the guy. Okay, and uh, so it sort of organically happened, right? Uh, where we started the roofing, and I remember we did the first roof, and I'm like, wow, that was actually pretty easy. That was pretty cool. And then I did the math on the numbers, and I'm wow. like, wow, this is pretty profitable, right? And then one thing led to the next, and I actually did roofing and uh, LA Fitness for four years. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So I've actually only officially been in roofing full time just over two years. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so, so that's how it progressed and that's how it really got started. And then, you know, uh, one thing led to the next and eventually I was looking at, I'm making three times the money in my part time job that I am my full time, uh -huh. you know, I went and sat with my wife and I'm like, Hey, nothing changes. You know, there was only one downside to it. I ended a really good relationship that had been in existence for a very long time. And I also, I had sweat equity, uh, which was non-vested. So it was only worth something to me if there was an event. Right. Gotcha. And that didn't happen while I was there. So I gave it up. Wow. So who knows what that could have been, what right. it would have been. Uh, but I did walk away. So it wasn't just as simple as, uh, it's sort of, you know, why I hung in there so long, right? was because I wanted to eventually, you know, get some kind of benefit. Hey, yeah. Right. Yeah. Golden, the golden handcuffs, if, the, if you will. Golden handcuffs, golden parachute, depending on where you're standing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, it was, it was, it was a bit of sweet moment, uh -huh. but, but in reality it was, it was very good. And, and, um, Definitely not a waste of time, and I'll tell you why. Because a lot of what we do today mm -hmm. were the lessons that I gained there, right? right? The lessons in multi-unit leadership, the lessons in management, the, le the lessons in personal development, uh, the lessons in building a team, the lessons in building a culture, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So I was already doing it. Right. I just brought it to this business. Gotcha. Yeah, I heard in another podcast you were on, that you said, uh, you know, people say, don't you wish you started 10 years earlier? And your answer was, well, maybe, but I wouldn't have had those skills to necessarily be where I'm at today. Sure. I yeah. totally resonate with that. I... Well, I'll give you a quick example, and hopefully it's not too uh, long way around. Uh, when I was at LA Fitness and I wanted to become um, a VP, mm -hmm. I was uh, the top general manager. But I was one of those guys that was always sort of, challenging leadership and challenging ownership and you know even though I was really good I just always had this quick to fire attitude mm -hmm. right and uh and to some in some ways thought I knew better right okay. so I still needed to be humbled a little bit um but I remember once I went to a meeting all the VPs are at the front of the room and all the GMs are in the room and they're talking to us and I just you know I felt like I was better than some of them so I challenged them all the time okay you know, and one day a guy came up to me and he, one of the regionals actually, he says, you know, I want you to try something. Next time we have a meeting and we, we say stuff, 
I want you to act in a positive way and say great idea and get the crowd going in a positive way instead of challenging it. He says, because you're, you're going to waste your talents until you make that shift mentally. And uh, I remember the very next meeting, I was sitting in the group and one of the guys said something and I started clapping and then we all stood up and started clapping. It was a great idea. And, and, and so it, it went on. And I think what was more important is internally, I felt a shift. And, and in some, in some cases, uh, our whole life, people tell us things, tell us things, tell us things, but until we're true, re truly ready to receive the message, mm -hmm. right. right. We're not truly going to execute. So sometimes in life, that timing is so important. And I said that in that podcast that, Hey, you know what? Maybe if I did do it sooner, the receiving of the feedback and the information may not have been treated the same unless I'd had those experiences. Right. Right. So, so I think a lot of cases, it's not just that you had the opportunity or, but it's more that you're willing to receive the opportunity and all the lessons to grow. And, um, uh, based on my upbringing, um, I probably needed to stay there a little longer to make sure that some of those things were permanent. Gotcha. Yeah. What is it? They say the teacher will appear when the student is ready. Something like that. Yeah. I, I forget the statement, but yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So it was you and Neil and he's selling roofs and you're managing the, the small business at the time. Uh, what was that, that first roof? Like what was that, that first job you guys were knocking doors? How did that come about? Yeah, we knocked doors. It was in okay. McKinney and we got this roof and this guy said, yeah, sure. And, and we just <laughs> like, Oh man, he said, yes. Yeah. Now what? Yeah. He's cool. And then, you know, I was like, man, cause at first, you know, Hey, I was like, yeah, you know, I don't know if this is going to work. I don't know, you know, roofing. I mean, is this even really for me? Right. You know, that kind of stuff. So when we got that first one, it was crazy. But one of the stories, so we started that, and then there was the first hailstorm, which was down south in Waxahachie, right? And we got the hail report, and we, we, we meet down, there's like four of us, we meet down at Chick-fil-A uh, down in Waxahachie, right? Yeah. At like 5.30 in the morning, right? We're eager beavers at this point, and we want to get a meal, and we're going to knock those doors the minute it's light. And uh, how does it go if you're not first, you're last? Um, and so we, we want to be first. Yeah. So we get out there and we knock till like noon. We can't find it. No hail, no damage. Little hail, but nothing it's worth scary. anything. Yeah. And I remember we were at lunch and everyone's like, oh, I guess there's nothing. Maybe we'll go back. I remember looking at Neil saying, no, we're going to stay here all day, every day. It was hell yeah, we're going to find it. I think at about three o'clock that afternoon, we found a street. I think we landed up doing about 26 homes on that street, wow. right? So sometimes that persistency, uh, and I know it was only one day, but that was the beginning of the company, right? And that was our first positive major momentum, gotcha. right? That built a belief system, right. right? And then also started setting the stage for culture, mm -hmm. work ethic, uh, you know, standards, mm -hmm. you know, how many can you knock in a day? How many can you get? Profit margins, O and P, all those dynamics that right. come in come into it, right? Stay the course, right? Yeah, yeah. So I've spoken about that my whole life. I I was at my last uh, uh, business for twenty years, uh -huh. so I'm just a huge believer in staying the course. Yeah. Um, I sort of feel bad with some people that interview me because I call them popcorn. They pop all over the place, <laughs> right? Um, you know, if, if you haven't been able to stay the course anywhere, right. how and why would this be different? Right. Because there's something internally that you're going to have to deal with there. And, mm -hmm. and maybe you need to have a chat with yourself in the mirror because you can't keep jumping from company to company and yeah. it's everyone else's fault. You can't always blame the boss or the leadership. It's, it's got to be like, well, something's wrong with me. Yeah. Well, something's got to be transformed within me first. And every now and then I give those guys an opportunity to join us and 90% of the time it doesn't work. We have good intentions of people, right? We want to see the best right, right. and we want to give people, if we see a glimmer of hope, we want to give them an opportunity to make the change. Yeah. Do you see in this industry that there's a lot of people that are wanting that quick hit and just that, that overnight success without the willingness to stay the course and persist? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. The minute things don't go their way, they're, they're moving from company to company and you see it, you see it on social media. Yeah. You know, and then there's also guys that want to 
work different companies during different seasons. Yeah. They're working in one company and some of my guys have even said, hey, I got a guy in Minnesota that wants to come work for us during the summer. And I'm like, not interested. Because all he's going to do is come to build relationships mm -hmm. with my guys and then he's going to say, well, it's better here. And now you just right. have this, this thing or vice versa or I'm going to steal him from someone else, right? right? right. Um, I think out of uh, all of our guys, I think maybe two or three guys come from roofing. So we're, I'm not out there trying to meet other people's people to hire them. I'm actually not interested in them. Um, there's a couple of us here in Dallas that all come from the health club business. Regional guy from 24-Hour uh, Fitness, okay. um, a few LA guys. And all these guys have also, because of us, have opened roofing companies. Okay. And they've gone in the same direction, right? And we actually have sort of this pact with each other that we're not going to let our guys switch from from Okay. we're not going to co-mingle, gotcha. right? So what it also does is it, it, it forces a guy to stay the course because mm -hmm. he doesn't have those options. Right. See, because he's got those relationships. We all know each other from the past industry, yeah, yeah. right? So they feel like they can tap into those relationships. But what we've done is said, no. We're not gonna, agreement, yeah, kinda? we're not going to do that, right? So when I see in the industry, I see it on social media, certain guys at this company, and he makes a post, I was with this company for X amount of years. I love those guys. But my new path is with this company, you know, and and you see that you see that movement, right? And yep. I mean, I know it's a bad example, but when you're younger and you go to the bars, right? You go to the first bar and you're like, "Ah, oh, this place sucks," right? Then you go to the next one and it sucks, and you go to the next one and it sucks, and then eventually at the end of the night you're drunk and you're like, "Fuck, that first bar surely did have some honeys." <laughs> you, you know. You should have just stayed at the first right, one, right? You should right. have just stayed the, the darn course. In. Put the work in. Stayed the darn yeah. course. Stop looking for the easy pickings. Right. Stay the darn course. Yeah. It's the only way to grow, you know? And plus, like, you're you're investing in people and their leadership and their coaching and training, so why would you want to invest in someone for a season and they're gone? You know, that's not going to benefit anyone. Yeah. Well, it's the same as, you know, a new company starts and then all of a sudden they're not charging overhead or they're paying a higher commission rate. We have that happening out here all the time. I mean, for those people that don't know, I mean, DFW is a shit show when it comes to roofing. I mean, it's the Wild West. Right. I mean, yeah. There's companies opening left and right because the barrier of entry is so low. Yeah, the licensing. Yeah, all that stuff, right? So, you know, it's just like um, if, there's no, if there's no value there and then all of a sudden they start, because this is what happens to us in DFW. Certain companies actively poach our guys. Or attacking them on social media, befriending them, you know, and then offering them better packages, mm -hmm. right? And I'm like, number one, you can't scale, you can't grow a company on no overhead. Right. You can't grow a company on 5% overhead. Yeah. You can't grow a company paying 60% commission. Yeah. So at some point, it's a bait and switch. So, so just understand right. what you're getting into. And in most cases, I believe that through training, development, culture, and teaching, right, mm -hmm. uh, we can get people to make more money on our structure, even if other people have higher structures. And by the way, our structure is even with the industry. We're, right. we're not high and we're not low. Mm -hmm. It's enough to, you know, pay attention to costs and grow uh, without creating too many problems. Right. Yeah. So you guys would say you have a lower, there's, all right, let me back up. Um, so the industry, there's a high sales rep turnover. Churn is like, is, is crazy, right? That's yes. a, the backdoor problem, right? Yeah. Bring in guys, train them. They leave out the back door. They start their own. Do you guys have that? Or do you have a, would you say you have a pretty low turnover? What's, uh, what's your situation? Our turnover is very low. We have had one or two go on their own. Yep. It's par for the course. Yep. It's going to happen. It's, it's not waterproof. Um, but I also challenge on how long those guys will make it, mm -hmm. right? Because if you couldn't make it as a sales guy with right. me, uh, if you can't manage um, uh, your own checkbook, how are you going to manage my checkbook? Right. Right? You can't manage your own schedule. How are you going to manage a business schedule, yep. right? You can't, you can't, you know. Uh, so once again, it's, it's that trap in the industry where you're a good salesperson. Oh, I'm going to go open my own roofing company. Mm -hmm. And then you go open it and then you get into it. And yes, you do well initially. It's so easy when you're motivated. It's like a new relationship, man. It's right. so exciting. 
I mean, you do meet, everything right. Yeah, come on, know? man. You meet someone, you meet someone somewhere, and they live an hour and a half away, right? And they call you and like, hey, you coming over? Yeah, I'll be there. You know, you finish work eight o'clock at night. You drive an hour and a half. You're there nine thirty at night. You stay and, and you, maybe you stay the night. You get up at four in the morning to get back in time to get to work, right? Yep, we've all been there. Hey, hundred and twenty days later. Hey, honey, you coming over? Babe, I had a long day at work. I'm tired. You see, it's because that that newness and motivation yeah. is gone, right? And that's the that's where everyone finds themselves. Maybe it takes longer, right? And then the other trap in this business is you can get away with it for a minute. And here's why. You're collecting all those upfront checks, mm -hmm. right? So now what happens is even if you've managed your money well, uh, poorly, you start using new money to pay for old bills because right. you spent it, right? And then you can switch from supplier to supplier because you may not have paid this. So now you open an account of this supplier, right? And then they do the same thing on taxes, right? So... You, you know, not saving, for taxes. not saving for taxes. And then the first quarter of the year, they're crunching to save all their money to pay their taxes for last year, yeah. or they get an extension and then, they, then they're playing that game. But inevitably, this whole game at some point will crash and burn, right? Unless, yeah. unless you start buckling down and saying, hey, I'm going to bring in some professionals, I'm going to learn this shit, and you're going to convert from a door knocking salesman to an actual businessman. Right, you're gonna go study some shit. Maybe you're gonna go get yourself a coach. Maybe yeah. you're gonna hire some professionals to do some for you. Or you're gonna bring some professionals onto your team, and and then you know you can get there. Yeah, you could become like a drug dealer. Right. You know, drug dealers. You know what they did, right? They made all their money selling drugs, and then once they made all their money, they went into defense, right? So then they cleaned their life up, and now they're living a a great life, right? But there's a large portion of them that don't. Oh yeah. Right. I mean, more not than do. Right. But there are those few guys that get through. Right. Right. Um, and that's what they got to do. Right. Not saying everyone's drug dealers, but you get my point. Right. Right. Same mentality, which is the go for do the, what it takes. Go for the high right now. Get it done. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> All right. So yeah, that's definitely one thing that and we we work with hundreds of roofing companies, so we've seen everything you're talking about as well. What were a couple other surprises that you saw coming from outside the industry, kind of in corporate America, coming into the roofing industry? Like, what kind of, what kind of blew your mind? I mean, I don't know. You know, I come from an interesting background. I'm not sure that anything really blew my mind based on what I've been through and okay. and basically been in business for 20 years. You've been through a lot of stuff, right? Um, but in Texas specifically, um, when a storm hits. I mean, roofers are fighting in the streets. I mean, guys are jumping down on roofs, getting in fist fights, and really, it is crazy. Like people like grabbing boards and stealing boards. I mean, yeah. we we got a guy recently um, on film going into yards and pulling people's Science. boards out. Yeah, just you know, silly stuff. Yeah. Like you know, that's the stuff that really ruins it for everyone in right. the eyes of the customer. Right, because it's just so you know. How does the expression go? People get funny when there's money, okay. and customers do too. But yeah. but you know these roofers. I mean these guys. Um, the whole persona, right? Um, I've I've told my guys, hey, if you want to be treated like a regular contractor, mm -hmm. then start fitting the mold. Right. Um, you know, start getting the belly and the big. Yeah. Beard, not to say, don't get me wrong, I'm not prejudging. I got a lot of friends with bellies and beards, nice people. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I'm not, you know, I'm not bad. Pe I'm just saying, don't, you know. It's how you position yourself. Yeah, how do you position yourself? Right. How do you, you know, do you wake up each day, look after yourself, look after your family, you know, uh, eat, ec eat well, exercise, uh, read, you know, grow yourself like a true professional. You want to uh, get paid like a professional, you better right. stop acting like one. Right, um, and it's a it's a it's a trap in the business because people can come into big money pretty quickly, mm -hmm. right? And they have a false sense of who they really are. Okay. They still got to be develop internal development, right? right. Um, I mean, we had uh, you know maybe some other stuff. We had we had problems early on. Uh, you know, my advice to people trying to shift from residential to commercial is uh, know what you're doing. Okay. Um, and if you don't know, don't take it on. It's not worth it. So you guys 
learn that the hard way or yeah in our in our uh year and a half we took on a job for a high rise downtown dallas and we'd probably only done like two commercial projects before that okay right so we dove high rise yeah. yeah yeah straight in right we got the sucker and uh first lesson insurance uh, right now, we have a process where we inspect all insurance policies and exclusions every month. Because guys get insurance and then they cancel. Okay. They give you the insurance certificate, it's just like cars. They yeah. give it to you and then they cancel. Right. right? And then they go do a job for you, something goes wrong, they don't have insurance. Right? Well, we had this project go, there was an exclusion in, in, in the thing that we didn't read that was anything over four four stories would be excluded in, okay. on his commercial policy, right? And then, you know, they did one of the uh, seams with the overlays wrong, water got in, first rain. It's an HOA, large building, first thing you gotta do is fix it. You don't have time to wait for the insurance company. Yeah, yeah. Insurance company hired a high profile attorney to try and scare us, okay. right? Uh, it wasn't a monstrous size roof uh, but it was about a $600,000 claim, okay. right? And I had to float about $280,000 for about two years because uh, I had to replace it out of pocket, mm -hmm. right? And then, and if we didn't have that money, we, you know, either go get a loan or go out of business, yeah. one of the two. Yeah. And then finally, I just slept a lawsuit on our insurance company and they paid after they bullied us for like two years. Wow. Yeah. Crazy stuff. Uh, so, first lesson there is insurance. Um, do everything you can to avoid uh, making claims on insurance because we made one or two claims that were smaller that we should have paid out of pocket. Okay. And then it haunted us for a couple of years on our premium cost, gotcha. right? right? And if you're scaling and your volume's going through the roof, right. that shit's costing you way more than it would have cost you right. to just pay for it yourself, right? Yep, um, bigger picture. Uh, I, guess, I guess I could probably go all day on things that I see. Uh, something that I know we were going to talk about at some point is um, there's there's not a whole lot of development taking place in the industry, mm -hmm. specifically in organizations, but that's probably because they've never done it. Right. They don't know how to do it. They've never right. been through it. So therefore, they're trying to figure it out. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think it starts, like we mentioned before, it's like the sales rep. Like, I'm going to go out and start my own business. That's like Michael Gerber, The E-Myth Revisited. Yep. First business book I ever read. And that, that, that whole technician, hey, I'm good at selling roofs. I'm going to start a roofing company. Yeah. doesn't translate a lot. No. But if they do and they, they build a company, then it's like they don't necessarily have the leadership training or the, you know, the business training, which I didn't either when I first started. I, I'm still learning those things. So I think that's what you see a lot of. And I saw it this morning. I, don't, I know you've seen it. I'm on the plane looking at Facebook and I see this, this sales rep. He's like, hey, I just started selling roofs. Um, does anyone have any advice for me? Any tips? It's like, wow. Are you working for a company? Are they providing you any training or just giving you, a, you know, an email address if that? And like, go sell some roofs, you know? Well, like, we see, we see that at, at a lot of these roofing conventions when we're up on these panels and the crowd gets an opportunity to ask a question and someone will come and bless their soul for asking a question. Mm -hmm. But most of them will ask a simple question like, how do I grow my business? I mean, that's so broad, Yeah. right? Let's, let's... You need some context there. Like, be, where are you at? Yeah. Give me something to go on, right? It's such a broad question. And how do I get to answer that on a panel? Yeah. I really don't have the time. Right to really dig into it because I don't understand your situation. Um, trying to think what else in the, in, in the roofing business has been, has been, you know, interesting. Um, do you think that you have succeeded or do you think you're where you at a few, do you think that where you're at a few years in with the success you guys have had and the fast growth is due to your outside industry experience? Absolutely. Yeah. I don't have any bad habits. I don't have anything, you know, that's why we don't hire. Uh, I'm not saying we don't, but we hardly ever hire anyone that comes from the roofing business. We, we say, hire the attitude, teach them the rest. Yep. Right? A lot of people want to, you know, listen, it's, uh, and you probably know this, don't do your job. You're going to have to allocate more and more money to marketing, more and more buying your business, mm -hmm. right? Right. There's a difference between 
buying your business and building your business organically, which you can do, right? And obviously that organic, you can do organic, but you can spend some money and build that, that machine, right. that generating machine, right? But, you know, a lot of guys fail to train their people, right? We train all the time. We are always training. There's always a Zoom call or something that people can tap into mm -hmm. as far as resources are concerned, mm -hmm. right? So, um, and none of it's mandatory. Okay. It's all voluntary, okay. right? You want to learn and grow? Jump on. Here it is. Right you you want to learn and grow? There's a meeting taking place. Once a month, we have a manufacturer's rep coming in every single month cool. doing a training, getting people certified. And we so you know when the factories open up again, we always take guys to the factories, let them awesome. understand and know everything about shingles, you know, so that they know their product. Awesome. Um, yeah. How about leadership and coaching and things like that? You're you're big on training leaders and building leaders, right? What's your? Can you talk about your philosophy there and where that comes from and how you guys do that? Yeah. So I think it really comes back to that same thing, right? Um, guys get good and they don't really know. You know, your best salesman, your top sales guy is not necessarily your best leader, right? right. Because they, uh, they're either not organized, they, you know, they suck at maybe personal discipline, uh -huh. they suck at all these other things, right? So what we do is we spend time with our leaders, for example, where we read through books. Okay. So we'll choose a book and everyone will read and then we'll meet and we'll talk about the chapters and... And then we, not only do we talk about it, we talk about, hey, what are the lessons and how do we apply it to our business, okay. right? So that we're continually developing them, right? Because uh, unfortunately, and not just in this industry, but this happens in the restaurant business, the health club business. I mean, most industries, when a guy gets pulled out of being a GM and he becomes a multi-unit operator, and I treat that in our business like you're not selling anymore, you're a multi-person operator, okay. right? And each one of those guys is a business. Right. Right, you're managing each of those businesses, and that's how I want you to think about it. Okay. Is you got to turn each person, each business, into a profit center. Gotcha. So you got to ask yourself, what is all the things that that person needs, the support, the the knowledge, and uh, when we talk about leadership and training them, we start thinking of some of the some of the simple things. Uh, for example, like uh, being a buddy and not a boss. Right? These are small traps that specifically in a contractor business that these guys fall into, right? right. Like, uh, let's say they're traveling, right? They're always in the bar and the restaurant together at night, mm -hmm. drinking, hanging loose, right? Now, all of a sudden, the next day, you need a guy to do something. And you're like, hey, get it done. And he's like, well, what's wrong with that guy? Right. right? No, 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 no. You see, you made them feel like we all buds, mm -hmm. right? And, and we are, but because it's also good to know your people know their goals, understand where they want to go. So you got to connect and get to know your people, but you can't cross that line. And how do you, how do you deal with it? Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, we have an eight year old son and we, like, I think about that all the time because I want to be bu best buds with him, but I'm also his dad. And you know, there's, there needs to be that, that awareness, you know? So, yeah. yeah totally. So, so simple leadership things that the minute someone gets put into leadership, what are the pitfalls? What are, what are some of the things that they're going to have to pay attention to that they could be making as mistakes and not realizing it and then find themselves in a position where now maybe their team doesn't like, trust, and respect them because they've made all these mistakes without even realizing right. the monster they were growing, right? Mm -hmm. Like uh, that trickles down into it does. the whole team. It does, yeah. Um, I spoke earlier about trying to control results instead of influencing thinking. Right. You know, you wake up and all you want to do is discuss numbers with these guys. Right. Yeah. But you don't know whether that guy uh, is going through a hard time in his relationship. You don't know if his wife's about to leave him or something happened in the family or, or yeah. whatever it is. So. Right. So try and connect with the person first and then go through some of those things. Right. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I was trying to think of some of the acronyms that uh, that we talk about in in. Uh, you know, we've got some acronyms in, in redirecting and how to handle certain situations just as we teach in sales, right? Okay. Listen, agree, isolate, overcome, reclose, right? Okay. It's steps to overcoming an objection, yeah. right? So we, so we, so we, we work through these things. Um, and then obviously whenever guys have uh, concerns with people on their team, a lot of times either myself or Tony, our VP of sales, uh -huh. will meet with them with their people, handle it, 
and then next time ask them to handle it okay. and then ask them what the lesson was and then go through it so we work them through all these all these steps in leadership with their people so that they're not just uh you know high and dry right yeah. and then they don't depend on you as the owner where you know they're blowing your phone up every time there's an issue right they're able to, to solve that well <clears throat> now the quick one small one in management someone calls you with uh with problems what do you do you ask them how they would solve it. Well, you ask the average person, what would you do? A guy calls you up, he asks you how to do this, this, and this, right? Most people are like, oh, this, this, and this, and this. No, you got to feed it back, mm -hmm. right? Be the mirror, feed it back, force them to try and solve it themselves. If they can't solve it, then jump in and redirect, right? Okay. So, you know, these kind of things, because otherwise your phone rings all the time yep. because your people sure. need you so much. And these are... Crushed. These are very simple concepts that maybe you and I, because we've been in business and doing stuff for a long time that we're just mm -hmm. familiar with, but maybe that salesperson that's never been in leadership or management, you know, they don't think about some of these small things. They actually right. find themselves, uh, and you hear this a lot in business today, you find, they find themselves being trapped to their business because yeah. uh, they feel like the business can only operate with them there, right? right? Uh, an example I give is, I was far more stressed at 20 people than I am at 120. Really? Yeah. Because you were having 20 direct reports? I had less leadership, less yeah. management, and I was doing too much myself. Right. right? Uh, when we first started, I operated out of one of those old school checkbooks. You know the big one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The three and I wrote the on... uh, yeah, and okay. I wrote the 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 subs name and the amount in the stubs, and I'd do payroll myself on Saturday mornings, and I'd go through all my stubs. Okay. That was my accounting when <laughs> I first started. Right? Terrible. Yeah. Um, but I wasn't sure it was going to be this big business yet, right? right? So I was just like, yeah, I'll write a check. It's all cool, right? So we got to work. We got to work through some of those uh, stages. Um, but yeah, I mean, listen. There's a lot of resources out there. That is, there's a lot of leadership books. There's a lot of management books. There's there's a lot of coaches. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people that you can hire, even if you you feel like you don't have uh, the ability right. uh, to do that right away. Then hire someone, learn from them, and then mimic what they taught you. Right. Right. Short the learning curve. Sure. Yeah. I'm all about it. Yeah. Uh, at one point, I met with all our suppliers, and I said we have to move from. Uh, transactional to relational, right? So right now we engage in transactions, mm -hmm. meaning I buy a shingle from you at a price and you give me the shingle. That's yeah. a transaction, yeah. right? But there's no growth there, yeah. right? So any relationship that we have moving forward can't be transactional, right? Whether it's with a PA, whether it's with attorneys, whether it's with uh, suppliers, any vendors, you name it. If they're not taking a keen interest in helping me grow my business, I can't buy from you anymore. But it's a two-sided coin. Right. You're going to be loyal to them. If I they... am. I don't go bid everything out every right. time I get a job. I'm loyal to them. I want to do the same with manufacturers. I want to do the same with suppliers. But, but I want that growth. Meaning, you guys have relationships that I don't have. I need introductions. Yeah. I want to grow my business. Right. right? But I'm going to reciprocate. Meaning, if, if I get better and bigger, people will listen mm -hmm. and say, wow, I want to listen to that guy, yeah. and I want to do what that guy's doing. Right. And if he's buying from those guys, they've got to be good. There you go. Right? So I've already referred a ton of business over to our suppliers from existing contractors okay. um, because that relationship of growth is a two-way street. I'm not greedy, just serve me and bow down to me and, right, right. you know, like I've even told the guys, I'm not interested in going to lunch all the time yeah. or, or going to happy hour and drinking all the time. Yeah. I want to know how we're going to grow my business Right. and I'm going to help you grow your business. So that's an intentional decision that you make. It's yeah. not like, oh, I wish my suppliers would treat me better. I wish they would, you know, get back to me or make the drops on time. It's intentional. I like that. Yeah. So you mentioned, you mentioned leadership, training, support, all that sort of thing. Where do you find your where do you find your people? That's another big question in the roofing industry. Like, ah, oh, no one wants to work, people are staying home, I can't find people. If I could only find the right people, we'd be we'd be ten Xing this year. What's your uh, what's the secret, Kurt? So uh, I don't know if I said this in, in one of the others, but uh, the first thing I say to anyone that wants to grow a business is look in the mirror. Right? Um, and I talk about skill set and character. 
and this may even answer one of your past questions about surprising in the industry. Yeah. A lot of shady people in this business. Yeah. And they'll screw you over and stab you in the back fast, right? And I'm just a firm believer that uh, we talk about people choose to follow you. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a gift to you. It's not something bestowed on you because of your title. Right. Right. And as long as you start understanding that and truly acting that out, just like mission statement and core values, everyone gets them, yeah. but then they go on the wall and then they get forgotten about. Yeah. They don't truly hire, fire, coach according to those values. Mm -hmm. do, do, do you see what I'm getting yeah, at? Totally. Right. Um, it feels good to do that exercise in January. And yeah, it right. feels good and it's all cool and yeah. you got them all up, but we're not living by it. And then everyone talks about it too. They're like, well, that's not in line with the core values. So that, that was a lot of bullshit, right? Right. Uh, we, we really got to work. Now, it's not perfect. And I share this with people just because you do that exercise. You may get challenged the most right after you yeah. do that exercise, right? That doesn't mean like the minute someone steps out of line, you're going to say, okay, you're done. Yeah. We're still human beings. Let's take a deep breath. Let's try and work through it and figure it out. But at least it's a, it's like a, it's like a, a Northern light, right? You lift it up and you look at it and you say, how are we doing? Right. Right. We can compare ourselves to it. We say, how are we doing? Right. Are we in alignment with our values? There you go. Yep. Right. So skill set and character, right? So, you know, as long as we understand that, because a lot of people have the skill set in this business. That's what I see. They got the skill set. They know everything about roofing. Like they love to actually sit around and boast about, yeah. well, I was doing this and I was doing that and this angle and that angle. I don't know shit about those angles. Okay. Uh -huh. I don't need to know shit about those angles. Right. And I don't need to sit around talking about those yep. things. So a lot of people have the skill set. Then you have some people that have the character, but they don't have the skill set. They're not as gifted. They're not as talented. They don't have all that kind of stuff. Right. But they, they got good character. Yep. Right. And they go hand in hand because if you if you got good character, you're a good guy to go have a beer with. Yep. Uh, if if uh, you got skill set and no character, then you're really just a shady salesperson. <laughs> D does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. You need them both. Yeah. And I think the sooner people can realize that, you know, just stop screwing each other over, mm -hmm. stop lying, cheating, stop being so 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 self-centered, and really just start caring for your people and and and, you know. So I talk about organic uh, growth in our team. Uh -huh. Rabbits. If, if at the end of the day, people know that the leaders, it's real and it's true. It's not a show. It's not an act. Leaders live by it. Not perfectly because people are going to falter. Mm -hmm. But most of the time are doing their best to live up to those standards. Then I, I call it attraction power. People will be attracted to you, right? So their friends, their colleague, their family. Well, what we do is we focus on putting everything on social media. Yep. Everything, right? That's that's why we're here today. Yeah. <laughs> if you if you're friends with a, a lot of our people, we put everything on social media, right? Yep. And what happens is you start building this this thing, this feel, this vibe that everyone, whenever they see linear roofing, they think, whew, right? They think, wow. Those guys are just like killers. They don't look the same. Yeah. They don't act the same, right? They're doing great things, right? That doesn't happen by chance. Right. That's all by design, right? It's, it's not, no one's getting lucky here, right? Uh, and, and, and as soon as people can realize that, and I, and I said this in some of our events, everything adds, everything takes away. Nothing's uh, uh, neutral, okay. right? Earth's rotating, you're standing still, you're going backwards. You got to get moving, nice. right? Stop standing still because if you are standing still, you're going backwards, right? So when we think about our leadership and we think about recruiting and we think about uh, growing the business, it all counts, right? So some people say, yeah, but do you run an ad to hire people? I think one or two of my team leads may put a thing on Indeed here and there, but as a company, we do nothing. Mm -hmm. we, we don't actively try and recruit, right? right? All our recruits come to us mm -hmm. through our social media, how we treat people, right. success, rabbits, yep. uh, where people are sitting around because they spend so much time on this freaking phone now, yeah. right? Everyone's glued to it. Yep. And every time they get on their wall and they like, ah, this linear roofing, this linear roofing, these guys, man, this looks yeah. fun. Yeah. This looks cool, man. Next thing you know, I get a message saying, hey, how can I join your team? Yeah. 
That's a dream come true for most owners. Oh yeah, but but it's by design. Yeah. Right. So, uh, and you probably know a lot more about this than me. But you know, one of the other things we coach our people on is that your your social media is not a private life anymore. It's just yeah. not. And if you're in roofing, and you're in the club, and you're popping bottles and yep. shit, and you're like putting that on your social media, yep. not a good look. Yep. Just not a good look. Because when you leave a customer's house, they plug your name into social media, oh, yeah. and they check you out. Yeah. And they know what kind of person they're dealing with, right? And I'm not saying you can't do that stuff. I mean, everyone can have a good time every now and then, but just don't be putting all that stuff all over social media, right? right? The other thing we teach our people is that if you, if you consistently post business on your social media, you get tuned out. Yeah. People want... I've learned that actually myself. Yeah. Sometimes I'll post too much education and you get crickets. And like, I... People yeah. need to connect with you. Yeah. People follow you first. Yeah. Um, I remember I had this one lady start with me and... And she had this Instagram account with all these followers, right? And then she sent me a screenshot. She's like, started my business account now. And I'm like, X that. She's like, why? Like, people don't want to follow a business. Yeah. It's nothing exciting about following a business that may want to sell you something. Right. Right? So what you got to do is lead, your, lead a good life. Yep. Put it on social media. And every now and then throw in some, some stuff so people know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You do a cool project. Put it on there. You do something cool with your family, put it on there. Because they get to follow a character, yep. an individual, as opposed to a business, yep. right? So with all these things coming together, right, we get this influx of talent that want to work for us. So much so that we don't even hire everyone anymore. We, we, we're, like, we, we're at a point now where we do 10, 15 interviews a week okay. organically, Wow. right? Just by doing the right thing, looking after people, uh, doing what you say you were gonna do, treating customers right. Yeah. Um, don't get me wrong, it's not a perfect world. It's right. not like there's no problems. Right. They come, but we fix them quick. Yeah. Well, it's the same, I mean, you're, you're, in effect, you're building your brand to attract team, team members. members. It's just, it's just the, the same, same when you, you build, build a brand, brand to, to attract, attract customers and clients. clients. It's you selling without work. selling. Yeah. People are too focused on selling. Exactly. People, Everyone. Hey, think about it. You go selling. somewhere and you meet a bunch of people and it's like, hey, what do you do? What do you do? Yeah, I do roofing. Hey, do you have a house? Maybe I can inspect your roof. Yeah. I never do that. Yeah. I never do that, right? I want them to get to know me first. Mm -hmm. I want to get them to a point where they basically say to me by the end of the night, hey, you want to come check out my roof? Right. Right? I don't have to solicit, yep. right? I just have to get people to know me. I'll give you another one. So in this business, everyone's like, oh, it's the power of the referral. It's the power of the referral. It's, it's, it's uh, you knock the house, you get the roof, and then you, uh, we call it a six pack, right? So here's the roof, you knock these two and these three, because we come from the health club business, we call it a six pack. All right, nice. Six pack everything. Yep. Every install six packed. That's the deal, right? And, and get your referrals, right? right? Do such a good job with this customer that they want to refer you everyone and walk you over to the neighbors. I love that. Yeah. I think it's awesome. Yeah. Here's where most companies are missing the boat. They don't ask. No, they do. Okay. Or maybe they don't. <laughs> <laughs> you should be doing the exact same thing with your people. There you go. That's the point. The point is... If I look after you so much and you love me so much and you think this is the best place to be, what are you going to do? Tell all your friends. You are. Or they're just going to, your friends are just going to see it. They're going to see like, it. This guy's killing it. And they're like, hey, how, can I come work with you guys? Yeah. And we get that all the time. Yeah, I bet. We got so many people that are friends with each other that are here because they saw what their buddy was doing, mm -hmm. right? And they're like, man, I want to be a part of that. Yeah. It's like back in the health club business, when I walked into a club and a, and a store was suffering. And the first thing the guy would always say is, I just can't seem to find a team. I said, well, it's depressing in this place. I wouldn't want to work for you either. Right? It all starts with you. I mean, no one wants to work for you. Right. Like, 
Why is it so hard? Either you're not training them, you can't get anyone to a level of success, and that's why you can't build a team. Right. So when you find yourself without having these people coming to you, it means that you can't get your existing people to be successful. So instead of trying to go on a recruiting campaign to hire a whole lot more people, right. you should look internally and say, where do I need to grow first mm -hmm. and get this where it needs to be so that I can start bringing more people in that, are gonna, that I'm going to run through my system yep. and spit them out the other side and they're going to be a success because yep. now they're going to start, right? So another thing you'll see on social media, we're always doing social events with our people. We're always connecting mm -hmm with our people, right? Yeah. They're, they're not just numbers. And when we continually connect with them and we're always, yeah, we spend money on it. We throw money at it, yeah. right? But I still believe that there's so much value in their mental state. It's everything in this life's a mind game. Mm -hmm. It is. When the mind is right, everything comes together. Yeah. When the mind is wrong, it all falls apart. So the more time we can spend getting the mind right, the more our people do it voluntarily. Right. They don't feel forced. That's another thing I get from, I'll keep talking about this. It's another thing I get from company owners that keep asking me like, how do you get you guys to work on Saturdays? They gotta wanna. Well, think about it this way. If their mind was right, you wouldn't have to force them to work on Saturdays. They would want to. You wanna know why? Because Saturday and Sunday is the, the best low-hanging fruit out there yeah. because everyone's at home. Totally. So when their mind is right, they want to do it. Right. But everyone's trying to figure out how to force their team to work on a Saturday. They should want to yeah. do it because they get the best return totally. on a Saturday or even a Sunday. Hell, I even tell guys, take Thursday, Friday off if you want. Yeah. One other thing, and I'm going on tangents, I tell my guys... Work three and a half weeks and take a four day vacation every month. Cool. Take your wife, take your kids, get a long weekend, do it every month. But when you're working, yeah. sprint. Sprint, take the time. Sprint, take the time. The beauty about that is you'll enjoy those moments more. Mm -hmm. You want to know why? Because you're not worried about the finances. Yeah. Right? There's nothing worse than going on vacation towards the end of the vacation because I know I've been there. I come from a poor upbringing. There's nothing worse than finishing the vacation coming back with credit card debt. Yeah. It's the worst feeling on earth. Yeah. You know, maybe everyone's happy because you bought stuff and you're feeling good, but inside, you, you personally right. inside as, as the breadwinner or the, or, or the man of the house, you're stressed because right. you're in debt up to the eyeballs. You know, but anyway. So you coach your team on... on on this on we, well we, this. we we coach him on man we coach him on so much private stuff i believe in an expression that says there's no such thing as business problems just personal problems that roll into the business i've heard that before yeah, yeah so we coach home a lot right, right. I, I get guys coming in presenting on self-employment pensions i get guys coming in and talking on all these topics because i want to help these guys grow right awesome. uh we sit with them on how to buy their first house and what are the pitfalls and I'll even sit with them and run through all the math on how to do that stuff and awesome. get them to a point like uh, even some of our guys I've sat with now know exactly what they need to save uh, between now and a certain time period to have what they need so that they're depressurized when they're into that. I won't let any of my guys, well, I don't want any of my guys, not that I won't let them. I don't want anyone buying a house without 20%. I don't want any of my guys paying uh, property yeah. mortgage insurance. Yeah. I don't want you know guys getting in and realizing that they got a house, now they can't get furniture. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we, we work through, you know, a lot of those kind of things. Uh, another, you know, big trap in this whole mind game is going home and sharing your day with your loved one mm -hmm. every day. Without you realizing it, you're building a monster. Because you go home and you just feed negativity every day. Okay. And that person that loves you is only going to act emotionally and then they're they're going to build resentment up to those people that you're talking about mm -hmm. meaning th those are just business moments business is not smooth every day right. shit's going to happen oh, every day you go home you feed the beast negativity all the time yeah. right because that's don't, what we're wired to do is you, focus on the negative yeah you come home you're tired your wife says to you oh baby what's what's wrong 
I had a shit day, you know, Kurt was on my ass today or, or whatever it is, yeah, yeah. you know, or this went wrong and I did this wrong and this whatever, whatever. And, you know, and over time, this person's building up this negativity, right? And then all of a sudden, every day you come home, I don't know why you deal with that. Yeah. You're better than that. Yeah. You know, and then... Because there's no context. There. No, no. And it's coming from someone you love. Yeah. Right? So now you start buying into it. And then eventually your attitude at work gets really bad. And you don't know why. Right. Now you're caught up in this headspace where it's all negative. And yeah. you, you, but you created it. You created the monster yourself, right, right. right? So I'm not saying you can't go home and talk to your spouse about some stuff. But just be very cautious about sharing things that really are just day-to-day -day stuff that happen in business that, uh, that, that really aren't going to go on too long, right? It was something that happened in the moment and it's gone, right? right? Uh, but instead, you're building a wall. Yeah. And the wall's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And eventually, you can't see over it anymore, right? And now you can't see clearly. And then, you know, a lot of times uh, when, when people are being irrational, the leadership or the management looks at them and says, oh, what's wrong with that guy? The wall's too high. Yeah. The logic's out the window. You can see it, huh? It's gone. So be, be intentional again. Yeah. With that yeah. relationship. Yeah. How do you do it? Your wife, you're a hard-charging guy. Yeah. You're working a lot. You've got a lot going on. Big company. How do you, how do you kind of have the have it all lifestyle where you have a great marriage, business, traveling, yeah. you're healthy. So, uh, not to inflate your head too much. No, 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 no. <laughs> I was going to say, you know, social media is a highlight reel. Yeah, I, I totally. Hope, I hope everybody knows that, yeah. right? You know, because we get, a, you know, sometimes uh, uh, my wife's uh, friend's husband's like, you know, look at me, you know, like, bastard, make me look bad. I'm like, <laughs> that's the highlight reel, man. Yeah. Um, I think any relationship, I think as long as everybody understands that it's a two-way street, okay. right? And everyone always has to have skin in the game. And I think that's the, that's the balancing act, right? So I'm in a couple of uh, private uh, mastermind groups and stuff. And sometimes uh, it's a bunch of business owners in a room that are sharing ideas. And one of the topics that comes up quite a bit is the work-life balance mm -hmm. and having the wife on board with the, the new business or the, the, you know, the working hours and the, you know, these kind of things. And, and I've always shared, shared with guys that, number one, um, us guys, you know, we get caught up in the, it's, it's, I'm the breadwinner and I'm bringing home the bacon and, you know, I'm doing the job and these kind of things, right? And, and, it, and to some degree, it's selfish because mm -hmm. it's not just about you and your career. Right. It's about your wife and the kids and, and their existence and their life and where they're going and how they're growing too. And we tend to forget about that because we get so sidetracked with making money and building a career, right? I've, I've been guilty of that many times, yeah. Yeah, I think all of us have made this mistake. Yeah. I, I only do these things through lessons of my yeah, own. Like yeah. I didn't make the shit up, right? right? Uh, you read them in a book. No, I didn't, no. I, this is just through my own experiences, right? Uh, like a lot of people say, hey, it seems like you spoil your wife. And I say, well, if I don't, someone else will. So I'm going to spoil her, right? And I guess the biggest lesson that I've shared with those guys in those rooms is that, A, it's not just about you. And the sooner you can realize that, the better off you're going to be. Uh, B, make sure that they share in the wins and the spoils, yeah. right? Because what do guys do? You know, they start doing better, then they go get themselves a nicer car, yeah. right? Or now they go get themselves the new uh, golf clubs yeah. or, you know, these kind of things, right? And... And it's like, you know, the wife's just at home being supportive. Right. Right. But let her enjoy, you know, maybe pick her up one day and say, hey, babe, let's, let's, let's go to the mall. Let's grab lunch, whatever it is, and say, any store, anything you want, any dress, any, like, we got an event coming up next week. Let's yeah. get you a dress. Right. They've got to, they've got to, you got to, while you got to keep the negativity away, you got to make them feel like they're part of this growth right. and that there's also benefit for them. Right. The time and money. And obviously it's not just about money. It's no, no. spending it's, time. It's, it's, it's both. So before I got married, uh, I made an agreement with my wife. And I said, I will not develop a hobby that I do on Sundays. Okay. So I'm not going to start golf. And then that one free day that I got, 
I'm going to go golfing. And gone for six hours. Right. Yeah. I'm not going to uh, come home and put the TV on and watch sports all day. Right. I'm not going to do that stuff. I give you that day, meaning uh, whatever you want to do. And that takes effort because sometimes I've had a long week and the last thing I want to do is go do something that my wife wants to do on a Sunday that just doesn't seem appealing to me. But, yeah. but, but it's once again, this is a two-way street. Right, this is right, not right. just about Kurt, right? Um, and I think when people can really learn and create a better balance there on making spouses feel more important, mm -hmm. making them part of the wins, part of the spoils, um, you'd be amazed what they'll let you do. And I don't mean that let you do negatively, right. but give you more freedom. For example, at one point I said to my wife, I said, don't ask me when I'm going to be home. I said, well, what do you mean? Know this. I'll always be home as soon as I can. Because right. the problem is, by design, if I tell you six and I get busy and I get home at seven, every minute past six, you're getting more and more annoyed. Resentful of the business. Yeah, 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 yeah. All these kind of things, right? Yeah. But that takes a lot of work and discipline, you see, because a lot of guys, they, they may say that, and then they finish work, and one of the guys wants to grab a drink, now they go grab a drink, blah, 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 and then they're finally at home on a Sunday, and now they're clicking channels, yeah. right? It takes a lot of discipline on your part, right, to make sure that you keep that balance, yeah. right? It's not just, you know, a bed of roses. And also don't think you could just buy... Right. Everything and make it all fine. Because yeah. that's the mistake that people make with kids. Yeah. When when they're younger, right? It's this trap because you want to give them everything, right? But you yeah. but you don't want to, like, you want them to earn it. You, you want them to... to create a monster. Yeah. 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 Well, you, you brought up storm chasing before. You see it a lot in that industry. Or guys are on the road and they're like, I'm doing it for my family. I'm doing it for my family. It's like, no, you're not. You're, you're gone. You're doing it for you. Yeah. You're gone. No, you're doing it for you because you want your fishing boat or you want your, yeah. you, you want to get that new big truck or you, you know, while your wife's driving some old beater. Yeah. How about next time you work hard, you go home, you take her to the Land Rover dealership and you buy her a nice car. Yeah. Right. Let her feel like, wow, this, you know, because at the end of the day, uh, determine where you want to go and what you'll sacrifice to get there. You know, there is some sacrifice to become elite. There is some sacrifice to become great, right? Yeah, there's yeah. going to be, at times, there's going to be some time sacrifice. You know, some of those guys that chase it. But then, you know, sometimes it's not just about the financial rewards, but it is about that, like I said, that time allocation that I give on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. Like, like that's there. And know right. that know that some days I'll be home early. Yeah. Some days I'll be home really late. But just know this. I'm always going to be home as soon as I can. That takes discipline on your part because sometimes you do have that long day and then that guy says, let's go grab drinks and it's so much easier to just go grab drinks, right? Yeah. But now, now you wonder why your wife's angry with your job, mm -hmm. right? Because you, you chose the easy route. The easy route was to go and have a drink. Yeah. The better route should go home to your wife and kids right. and spend some valuable time with them. Even if it's watching a show, yeah. whatever it is. Yeah, we do that. Yeah. And even if it's not, you're not going out and grabbing drinks, there's always, there's never an end to the work. So it's like, oh, I, I can go home at 7, or I can just finish up these things to stay over here at 8 or 9. And that's just as irresponsible because you're not drawing those boundaries. Well, you could go home and jump in the office. Yeah. Right? It's like you're not really there either. Totally. Right? Yeah. Uh, so, so I have belief. Uh, I call it, uh, it's not necessarily the amount of time. It's the impact of the time. Mm -hmm. Right? So... Uh, I'd rather go on less vacations a year, but make those vacations extremely impactful, meaning extreme. Yeah. Go to like a destination across the world or, yeah. you know, and save for it. Make that so impactful, right? right? Uh, people talk about kids, right? Sometimes some guys uh, that are failing use their family, I hate to say it, as their excuse. Like, I got to go home to my family. I got to go home to my family. I got to go yeah. home. To... Okay, uh, two-year-old, what's their attention span? Five minutes. minutes? Yeah. Five minutes? Yeah. Okay, so every night you go home, are you spending impactful time with your son, or are you saying you just need to go home because you log in the hours? Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I call it commitment versus compliance. Oh, I like that. Right. Yeah. So we talk about this in the business too. We talk about: Are you in a state of committed to winning, mm -hmm. 
or you're in a state of compliance, meaning you got a checklist and you've done these things so you feel like you've done your job. Yep. Right? That is compliance, right? We've got to get committed to our process, committed to ourselves, committed to our family, committed to winning, uh, and we're going to start seeing the better version of ourselves, yeah. right? Instead of this state of compliance, right. right? I hate that. I saw it a lot in corporate America. Yeah. Because people become numb. So it's, it's not about winning anymore. It's not about being your best. It's just about, I got to be there from eight to five. Right. And I got to figure out what I'm going to do between those hours. Right. And I'm going to probably try and get away with as little as possible. Yeah. But I'm still going to collect the paycheck. Yep. And ask for a bonus. And, yeah, yeah, no doubt. And well, we, could, we, we could get into this generation and new generations and we could get into politics and all that stuff. It's probably not a good direction when it yeah, comes yeah. to entitlement. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. No, I agree with everything you said. Like even like I'm, I live in New Jersey. I'm down here in Dallas for this trip. I'm going to Utah uh, this weekend for another trip for business. And over the years, like those conversations become easier. Hey, my wife, Melissa. I'm going to Utah, I'm going to Dallas, is that cool? You know, or am I missing out on anything big? No, no, go ahead. You know, she trusts me that I'm making decisions for the business that are for, you know, for everyone's best interest because I am present on the weekends and I'm present at night and in the morning and things like that. So I it totally, I was thinking about that when you were talking about that, that intentional time, that committed time, the focused time. It's so key. Well, if someone was watching this and they were to play it back, they're like, well, what he said was really simple. Mm. But how intentional are you on the simple? Right. right. For those that are that heard it earlier and said, "Well, he didn't say anything genius," yeah. Which sort of is if you apply it. Well, what's it take you, to get? What's it take to get fit? What do you mean? What is? What does it take if I want to get in shape? What's it take? Discipline. Yeah. Yeah. Working out. It's all it is. Consistency. Out and eating right. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. It's all it is. But most people don't want to do it, right? They don't. Most people are looking for the magic. They're DMing you because they're looking for the secret, right? I, uh, a couple, many years back, I was listening to uh, motivational audio, and uh, there was a lady by the name of Connie Podesta. Okay. And, uh, and she, uh, she, I think she's old school at this point. And uh, she was talking about it, and she says how she was in HR. And, and, <clears throat> and I think for all those company owners that are listening or people in leadership and management, um, in 90% of the time, People come into your office and people have problems. Inevitably, when I sit with people for an extended period of time, what do you think it always, once we break it all down and we really get down into the woods, into the weeds, and we, we figure it out, right? What's the problem? It's personal. It's, it's, it's not business. And the more time we spend connecting, the more time we help people personally, the better they're going to be at work. Um, and she said it. She said, people always used to come to my office in HR, and 90% of the time, by the end of the conversation, we're talking about personal, right? Because that's where all the feelings are, and yeah. that's where all the issues are, right? And if we can if we can help people through that stuff, then the work becomes better. Awesome. Right? Um, so you bring a lot of this from your previous experience, you obviously, you read a lot of books. You're very intentional about what you're doing. Do you have coaches, mentors? You mentioned mastermind groups. Like, where do you draw inspiration from? Where do you draw, you know, how do you keep your skills sharp and, and developing and innovating and everything like that? So I do have a coach, Ryan Stuman. Cool. Uh, from Apex. Yep, I'm in Apex. Uh, uh, yep. Just joined last week, actually. Oh, nice. Yeah. Good. And uh, I think Ryan only has maybe four personal clients. Uh -huh. I'm one of them. Cool. Um, and a lot of people say, you know, yeah, I don't know about this. I don't know about that. And I got to pay the money and this and that and this and that. But I think, uh, you know, at some point uh, as a business owner, where's my accountability coming from? Because uh, sometimes as the boss, you tend to sort of keep everyone at bay and no one really holds you accountable, right? right. And right. we're all humans, so we can sometimes get into a slump and sometimes, you know, things can happen. And, and sometimes you can even, you know, you could even be... You know, a lot of people say, hey, uh, you know, trying to get there is difficult, but sometimes managing success is also difficult, right? And I talk about that in our leadership here. So I'll give you some quick uh, uh, balances. So a guy comes, he's got no money. 
So now I've got to work him through habits, discipline, all these kind of things. Then I get him there. And then he starts making more money, right? And then because he's never had much in his life, he wants to get all the blingy things and get that out of his system. So he goes and does all those things. And I try and coach him through that stuff, right? Then eventually we get him to a point where maybe he buys a house and maybe he's got no debts anymore. He's got 100, 200 grand positive cash flow in the bank account. Uh, now I got to start dealing with the pressure of success and coaching them through those things. So there's always a different level mm -hmm. that we're working at. Some people think, oh, you can just treat someone right and do a couple of things and they're done. No, right. everyone is at different levels, even in levels of success. Right. There's no such thing as, and you probably know this, there's no such thing as being successful and now you've made it. Yeah. Because being successful brings another whole different set of problems. Problems don't go away, right? No, they don't. And in some ways, it brings on much bigger problems and more stress. But I got to tell you, I'd rather be stressed about the winning right. than the losing. The good problems. They are. They're problems, but they're good problems. So we got to navigate, we got to navigate people uh, through uh, those problems. Cool. So... So I'd, some people say to me, well, why do you have a coach? Because, you know, you do well and all the rest of it. And I'm like, well, sometimes you connect with all these other business owners and they're sharing the stuff that they're going through that you never really get to share with anyone on your team, right? So you can go connect and relate. Yep. Uh, uh, not only that, coaches can shrink time. Right? I'm a huge believer in that, yeah. Yeah, so so if you don't know how to do it, I want to go connect with someone that knows how to do it, learn from them how to do it, so that I could shrink time and get to my destination quicker. Yeah, right? For sure, we, we don't have time to make all the mistakes. On no, our one of my favorite sayings is, ground can be recovered, but time never. Nice. Napoleon Bonaparte. Awesome. Right, war, yeah. right? We can recover the ground, but we cannot recover the time. Yeah. Right? So the more you can put in your, le your life to save on time and get places quicker and mm -hmm. be more effective and efficient, uh, hell, get yourself a coach. Whether it's a coach for marketing, whether it's a coach for how to do something that you're just not an expert at, really? you should absolutely get one. You're sort of you know, denying yourself the ability. You can't do it all yourself. Professional athletes have coaches. I mean, of course the they do. At the highest level of their, uh, their sports. Absolutely. Right. Um, so left to your own devices, are you being as accountable as you need to be to yourself and your family? And, and would it benefit you to have someone else nudging you as well? Right. And uh, believe it or not, you, you learn. You learn stuff you didn't know. Yeah. And then when you're in a group like that, you also learn from multiple people yeah. and you pick up multiple things. Um, and then there's also an expression in Apex that we talk about that's alignment over assignment. You know, it's, it's similar to that um, trying to control results instead of influencing thinking. Assignment, everyone's always so focused on the assignment, the assignment, the assignment, the assignment. But how about we get more focused on the alignment? Because you'd be amazed what opportunities that right. will bring uh, if you find yourself in the right circles with the right people right. doing the right things, right? How does that expression go? Uh, if you spend enough time around me, I may brainwash you into believing you're a superstar. Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. you know, and when you're in those groups like that, more often, more often, the more you believe. How does the expression go? And I'll come up with a million of them. You, you if you think you're right, you're right. If you think you're wrong, you're wrong. But yeah. either way, you're right. Yep. And the more time you spend in that space, I talk about two things. I talk about a lot of things. <laughs> How much time are you spending in the glass is half full zone yep. versus the glass is half empty zone? And the more time you spend in there, uh, time under tension, right? Exercise, diamonds, time under tension, time under the belt. Yep. The more time under tension, the better we're going to get. So we put ourselves in these positions with coaches and other like-minded people to spend more time in that zone yep. so that we can grow. Yeah. Expands your thinking. You Absolutely. find yourself thinking too small. That's the cool thing. Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, I uh, joined the Avengers Mastermind. Yeah. Uh, through Stuman's group, there's another Avengers mastermind with uh, Dan Fleischman. Okay. I don't know if you've heard of him. Wow. And uh, and a group of guys. And um, it's more of a real estate mastermind. Okay. But you go to one of these masterminds and you listen to all these stories and you hear the success and you, you, you see these guys on stage talking so big. Yeah. 
that when you walk away from that, you're like, man, I've been thinking too small. Yeah. Right. But when you don't go join these things and you don't go get a coach or you don't have someone else to expand that thinking, yeah. or even if you sometimes, because at first, uh, sometimes you're uh, um, not trusting. So you're like, ah, oh, this guy's going to take my money. Yeah. I don't know if I'm really going to get true value out of it. You know, so, so in the, it, it's, it's natural to be like that initially. Skeptical. Do, do you yeah. see what I'm getting at? But the more time you spend, eventually you're thinking, okay, well, yeah, maybe I can do this. Yeah. And, and, and that's the ROI right there. It is. Yeah. Yeah. You can't quantify it right away, but it's there, yeah. right? Because some people have said, hey, are you getting a lot of roofing business out of it? I'm like, no. Yeah. Like, well, why are you doing it? Because it dramatically impacts what I do in the roofing business. Right. And that has an ROI. Totally. For example, we just had one of those company events. I had world-renowned speakers at that event. Yeah, that seen. Pay twenty, forty, fifty, eighty thousand dollars to come speak. Through the alignment, I didn't pay a dollar. Awesome. So what's the ROI? Yeah. Because I was able to give back to my people. Uh-huh. Remember the whole uh, uh, referral thing. I'm, I'm giving back to my people. Right. Right, uh, there's a huge ROI on that. Yeah. Um, You're leveling up 120 people over the course of a day or two. So to answer your question, yes, I, I do. I have had small thinking. I have had moments of weakness, and and by spending more time in these zones mm-hmm. with these people, with people that know more about certain things than me, uh, the more I raise my game. Sure. Yeah. Same way. And and I got to say this for everyone listening. Because a lot of people get caught up in this. <clears throat> They're like, yeah, don't you make enough money? You got it wrong. It's not about the money. It doesn't matter if I got $500 million in the bank or whatever. I still want to be my best. Yeah. So even if we're making money, by me still pushing and wanting to be better mm-hmm. and to grow doesn't mean I'm chasing more money. Right. Chasing a better version of yourself. That's it. Yeah. I just want to grow. I just want to get better. I just want to improve. And the way that I do it is to focus on making others better. Mm -hmm. Because when I make others better, I have to grow myself to make them better. Right. Right? It's like I tell my leaders, you know, the more time you spend preparing and training your people, the better you get. Because you got to go prepare. I show you some... Uh, uh, screens and some presentations that I did I had to sit down and put those together it made me better so the more you invest in your people the better you get Mm -hmm. and it doesn't cost you money it's time I'm hosting a workshop tomorrow here in Plano and in four hours I got to be able to communicate several concepts very clearly without you know just just vomiting everything that I can give to people so that forces me to get more articulate, to get more focused on what I'm teaching and helps me to understand what I'm teaching better. So same thing. Yeah. Yeah. So what is, what's next? What's next for Kurt, Lanier? Growth. You know, like I said, uh, we've done what we need to do in Dallas. Obviously, we still got to focus on it and look yeah. after it and those kind of things. But uh, Colorado, Florida, okay. uh, they just changed the law in Florida. Yeah. So we got to pivot on our approach there. Which you will. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no doubt. I mean, there's still going to be roofs. There's still going to be business. Yeah. Everyone's like, oh, yeah, don't go there. It's like, as a matter of fact, I'm going to go there now because it's going to be less because everyone's go. scared. Everyone wants the easy, uh, the easy road. The easy road, right? Yeah. Um, we just opened up an office in Austin, so we're excited cool. about that. Um, we got a really good team out there. Um, you know, there's a gazillion things out there, uh, people talking about solar and, yeah. and all these kind of things. I don't know if I'll ever change my mind, but I'm a firm believer that we're good at what we do. And when you add something else like that, something becomes the red-headed stepchild. Uh-huh. So for the guy, those guys considering doing it, I would suggest open a separate company right. if you're going to do it. I've heard you talk about this before, yeah. Yeah, because... Uh, that would be my concern because right now our sales guys go to the job, spend some time there and all the rest of it, right? You do solo, they don't have to. They're selling paper to some degree. Right. 
right? And therefore, um, man, what was it? Uh, there was a book out there uh, about a bird in Arizona uh, collects things. Oh, yeah? And uh, this bird, uh, um, the more he collects, uh -huh. the more he attracts females, the more he gets the bang. Okay. No, seriously. It's a, this is a bird in, in, in Arizona. i got to tell you the name of the book. It's a great book. Pleasure Trap? Pleasure Trap? Yeah, you okay. got to read it. Really cool book. Right. Um, it's just, you know, why, why won't people give up a lot of these pleasures to be successful in life? And how do they keep getting sucked into uh, those things? It's the same reason why, you know, cocaine is... Even in the face of self-destruction, you'll still do it, right? Yeah. And really, the book summarizes that as humans, we want the most amount of pleasure with the least amount of resistance, the path of least resistance to get right. there, right. right? Which is crazy. But anyway, I don't know how we got onto that. So how does that tie <laughs> into, you're talking about maybe solar and the fact that you like to stay the course and focus? Oh, yeah, yeah. So so what's going to happen is your guys are going to, you know, they're going to realize that they can make more money doing less right because now they don't have to go watch the in-store yeah they can just sell paper yeah so guess what happens you cannibalize your roofing side right so choose your path right but I, i'm not so sure and, I, and and there may be unless a company started that way mm -hmm. from day one there may be some anomalies out there where right. where they've incorporated it and they've figured out how to make it work but if you're if you're i think if you're going to implement it at a later point just start a separate company, hire a separate force, and then you can use the roofing company as low-hanging fruit yeah. to get into to, or, or create a referral program yeah. between the two, right? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Um, kind of have a siloed. Yeah. 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 I'm a big fan of Focus. I mean, I used to run a marketing agency where we did like everything for like so many different types of clients in yeah. the construction industry. Yeah. And you just never, as a small company, like you never develop the processes to become great at anything. Yeah. And so now we focus on the training and there's always a temptation. There's always people like, hey, can you build a website? Can you run ads? That, that sort of thing. We can, but it's going to take away from our focus on this. There's an opportunity cost to everything. Well, it's the same as when a tornado comes through Dallas. Yeah. Right? All these houses are blown away. Right. My guy's like, hey, boss, we're going to rebuild this house and we're going to rebuild that house. I'm like, no, we're not. Like, what do you mean, it's boss? We're, we're giving up all this money. I'm like, that's not our business. Yeah. We do roofing. Hey, listen, fence, paint, uh, some small stuff, small concrete piece, whatever it is. Maybe someone wants something extended, whatever. We can do simple stuff like that. Listen, don't get me wrong. We've got the people to do all that stuff, yeah. but that's not the business I want to get sucked into. Right. Uh, I personally don't like an extremely long sales cycle because mm -hmm. I'm a firm builder. Like, I could never be a builder. That sales cycle... Yeah dealing with one person for like so long for a year or two, it's yeah. just i i just don't have the patience to want to do that personally money loves speed it does yeah, yeah. i don't I, I just i don't want to do it so when the tornadoes came through i'm like stick to guys get on the outskirts of it go get all the roofs with wind damage right. we'll put up new fences we'll paint all the rest of it i mean guys uh, if you've studied the what happens in a tornado and where the pressure goes and how it goes and goes over the house and creates racking in a home, I think it's called racking. I don't uh, know. Yeah, there's there's terminology like for it. Issues. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where where there's a slight shift in walls oh, yeah. and you don't see it, and then you go pop the roof off, you start dealing with issues you don't want to be caught in. So unless you really know what you're doing, let's not deal with that. Right? Uh, could I go get people that know what they're doing? Yeah, that's not the business I started. It's not the business I'm interested in getting into. I want to stick to what I'm good at. Yep. We did the same thing in the health club business when we bought companies. We took out everything, the juice bars, the tanning stuff, all the rest of it. And I remember once I asked the owner, I said, hey, why do we, those are revenue streams. Why did we get rid of them? It's not our business. It's not what we're good at. We're good at building health clubs and helping people get healthy and fit, and that's it. Yeah. We're not interested in the rest. I think that's what a lot of smaller, maybe younger company owners do is they like, okay, we'll do roofing. Yeah, we'll do siding, windows, doors. We'll, we'll figure it all out, right? And they want to serve the client. Like, ah, Mrs. Jones wants me to do the, the windows. I want to, ser I want to, I want to serve her. That's my job. That's my core value. But you're really not. You're really not serving her because you're not great at windows. 
you might be good, you're not great. And you're certainly not serving your business because you're not building a system, you're not building a machine that you can then scale and serve more people. And that's my philosophy on it. Yeah, there's definitely different schools of thought out on it because some guys talk about more meat off the bone, right? So, mm -hmm. so you're really dealing with the customer, right? So how much can you get out of that customer? Right, so there's, right. there's some value there, but that I personally have never enjoyed that. Right. <clears throat> Be aware of it. Yeah. Of what you want. So linear roofing stay in the course for a while. Any other any other businesses you got going on or that you're developing? Uh, nothing. <laughs> nothing on the record. N nothing that's camera worthy. All right, all right, nice. <laughs> uh, at this point, I mean, right. it may be at some point, but once again, same thing. Uh, you know, everyone. So a lot of these motivational guys out there are talking about you know multiple revenue streams. Yeah, yeah. All right, and I'm like, you know what? We're ruining people because you haven't become great at anything yet. Mm -hmm but you want to add something else to it yeah. and then something else. So now you got all these things pulling your attention, right? I get it. If you've operated a business for a while and you've made it great and you've got it to a point where you got leadership in place, you got structure in place, you got everything in place and your standard operating procedures and everything's where it needs to be. And now you want to go get onto a board in another company or you want to do something else. Now you've, you've earned the right to go do that. And yeah. I think it's smart. Yeah. Now, as an individual in today's climate, um, you probably, I think, you need to be investing. Uh, the future in, in the hedge of inflation from all the money we've been printing. Uh, I saw your post about that yesterday. Yeah, just yeah. to, I didn't go into too much detail on it, but, but essentially we're going to get eaten up with inflation and taxes and um, your pay is not going to get raised enough. Right. Your, 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 your quality of life or standard of living is going to decrease unless you start taking action in some other areas. And I don't mean start another job. I mean, you should be investing. You should be doing things that are, that are getting you more money that's going to put you ahead of the curve of inflation mm -hmm. uh, and taxes. That's right. Right? Uh, because we're going to have to pay for all the money we've printed. I think 20% of the money in circulation right now is all printed in 2020. And, and I know this is not a political podcast, but this is just some advice for some guys. You know, get hyper-focused on growing your business right now. Get hyper-focused um, on, on being the best you can be and maximize what you're making. And then take everything off of that that you don't need to live and, and invest it so that, um, I mean, I don't want to push coins, but I've had some high success in, in point, coins right now. Ethereum's through the roof. Uh, no pun intended. Um, uh, that's doing really good. Um, I'm not a financial advisor, so uh, right. put the disclaimer below. Yeah, <laughs> just that, yeah. Um, and I think the trap in the coins is that a lot of people are getting sucked into like trying to find that coin that's going to go up a thousand percent. Yeah, right. Quick buck. Yeah, and that's the trap. I'd still yeah. go for just like in stocks. I would still go for like the Amazons, the Apples, the the companies yeah. that you know are going to be around forever. Yeah. Right. Those aren't going to get you those massive gains. But the, the 10 year older person or the 20 year older person will thank that younger person for making that investment, even though it was just a trickle. Yeah. Right? right. So. Compound effect. <clears throat> yeah. Just, uh, like, just like business, just like going to the gym. Just like Nike, just do it. Every day. Right? Just do it. It doesn't stop tracing the big fish. Yeah. Right? Just put some money in some stuff and keep putting it in. Do dollar cost averaging. Yeah. I mean, put an auto pay, let it trickle. Every single week, month, two months, whatever you want to do, you'll thank yourself later. Right. So, because um, it may get worse. So, you know, we got to push in some other stuff. And if you're going to do coins, maybe stick to the main ones, you know, uh, Ethereum, Bitcoin. Right. Um, and then if you got some money to splash, you know, throw some at some chances. If you lose it, you lose it. If it right. takes one of those to hit, then it's good. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing. You got anything else uh, you want to impart on the audience before we uh, kind of sign off here? Just be a good human being, man. That's what it comes down to. Simple, right? Just, just be a good human being and look after people. Be a good person. Live your life as a good person. Not a perfect person. Yeah. A good person. Like I say in hiring, man, if, if they're a good person, hire them. You know, we can teach them the rest. Right. right? Just be a good person. Be a good role model. Do the right thing. Stop being greedy. Um, and everything will get easier. 
good to your wife, good to your kids, good to your people. Just be a good person, be a good human being and wake up every day and work hard. Put in a good day's work awesome. and you'll win. This Love is, it. hey, this is roofing. Yeah. There's nothing genius about this. <laughs> There's nothing special about this. It's simple. Yeah. Like you'll see on some of the posts, do the work. That's my advice. Stay the course. Yeah. Do the work, stay the course. Easy. Thanks so much, Kurt. Appreciate it. Yeah, likewise. Yeah. Thank you. That's a wrap. Woo! Nice. Thank you. I think I'm losing my voice. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat>